When we talk about self-love, self-compassion, those are not easy things, but in this episode 102, I am going to be sharing how I practice small things of self-love each day. I hope you find it helpful. Hey, hey, I'm Hillary Baggett, host of Hill Talks Momentum in Midlife Podcast. As an occupational therapist turned entrepreneur at 50, I'm on a mission to connect, motivate, and inspire women over 40, 50, and 60 to know that no matter what, you can reach for that dream and know. No matter what, it's important to me that you know you can reach for that new dream. You can love yourself. You can celebrate big things, little things. The important thing is to not isolate yourself. And in this episode, you're going to hear me talk a little bit about the ways that I practice some self-love, some self-compassion, a whole lot of humility, and more. Thanks so much for listening. Enjoy. Hey, it's Hillary. I am thrilled to celebrate with you the 100th episode for Hill Talks Momentum in Midlife podcast. And Celebration is super important and also feeling love. Can you feel the love? Do you remember, you know, can you feel the love tonight from the Lion King, right? Well, I have. I've truly felt love. The love from a parent, from a child, a sibling, a dear, dear friend. Sometimes love is all you need and maybe it's all you desire, but occasionally, Love is just not enough. Back in February, there was so much talk about love, pink and red roses, chocolate. Well, well, we can't limit or fault chocolate or getting dragged down into a self-limiting belief of the construct of the marketing extravaganza that was Valentine's Day. But feeling love is important. And for me, I know it's important that we bring love to the important people in our lives. Every single day. Am I alone in this? Anybody else there with me? How do you feel the love in your life? Sometimes we talk about Gary Chapman's five love languages, and there are five kinds of typical ways that we receive love. And that might be physical touch, affection, it might be quality time, creating a memory together, quality conversation, it might be the giving of a gift or receiving a gift. It might be acts of service, helping around the house, doing favors for someone, making their life easier. And what is that fifth one? Hmm. Sometimes those things are elusive. So how do you receive love? And Dr. Chapman will tell us that we often give love to others as we want to receive it. But in the celebration, I have to think about how how am I loving myself? And it can start as simple as with what I'm about to eat or drink. Is that a loving act for myself? Is there an emotion that I'm trying to numb instead of feel it and let it flow through its full course? Like an example, if I'm emotional and I've just made a um, nine by 13 of brownies, I can eat so many of them. And is that loving? Maybe in the moment it tastes good because I have a positive association with brownies. But in the end, whether hours or a few days later, do I feel good eating that? Do I drink enough water and hydrate? So I had to learn a lot about, and I'm still learning, about loving myself. And I spent most of 2023 trying to face all those fears and see what is truly loving to myself, the movement, the exercise, the self-talk, the eating, the hydration, and, and connecting with others. Because it's really easy for me, at least, to get stuck in my own head. And I think that there are best steps for me to feel more love in my life. And I think there are some that could provide value for you. And 
if you just look at what's the easiest one thing to change, something that takes less than five minutes a day, and it might be getting a glass of water. It might be choosing a glass that you love the feel of, that you like how your lips feel when it's touching the rim. And whether it's drinking coffee or just something you love to drink water out of. You know, I have a a family member that has this super bone china and she has her coffee in it every day. And I thought, oh, that's so fancy. But then I thought, yeah, why not? Why are we not drinking out of the fancy china or the fine crystal and doing those beautiful things? So start small. Uh, For movement, we are moving less. And you're going to hear in an upcoming episode where I talk to Kimra here. And she started Olympic competitive weightlifting levels and after the age of 55. And she had an illness that was wreaking havoc on her body. And in 10 minutes a day, she is showing us that you can make a change in your body. And even if you're walking outside, start with 10 minutes. Can you do 10 minutes a day, seven days a week? That's a small ask, right? You can listen to your favorite podcast. You can talk to a friend or family member, but getting outside and unplugging is a key thing. In fact, sometimes I listen to my favorite podcast and if Hill Talks Momentum in Midlife is one of your favorites, I hope you'll share it and tell somebody you can listen to this on the go. You can watch over on YouTube. All those things are possible. And I have another option for you. If you're already drinking your water, if you're already getting 20 minutes of movement a day, and then maybe you need more stillness and silence and less screens and less doing, five minutes a day, could you be intentionally still, eyes closed, five minutes a day? And I did a podcast on how to start your day out great. And I I guide you through that, how to get present in your body, how to breathe through and imagine that you're just inviting all this love from maybe the top of your head down to your toes and fingertips so that you're just feeling them. Well, I wanted to celebrate that this is the hundredth episode and I can't believe it. I, I don't think I knew how much work would go into creating and sustaining a podcast, I don't know if I knew how much joy I would get out of not just talking to you, but also interviewing the guests. And it's more comfortable to have a conversation with someone than just to be on this side of the camera or microphone and talking to you. But it has brought me a greater sense of purpose and joy. And I think I'm going to keep going. I think I shared, and maybe you listened to this episode when I talked about how at first I thought I have to produce one every week. And I was obsessed and stuck in perfection on the editing process. And I could spend 10 and 12 hours editing one episode. And what that really informed was that I was avoiding feeling something or I was stuck in fear. And if it wasn't perfect, would anybody listen? Well, the truth is, I'm not perfect anyway. So what if I just let that go and try to produce something that has content, has value, and can move forward? I am in the process of editing my first book and sending it to the professional editor. And that's what I've learned is that reaching out for others' help is an essential part of loving ourselves. Because if we think that all of the weight and the responsibility and the burdens are on our shoulders. We're just not meant to do these things on our own. So I hope you feel encouraged today. Um, I learned that I need to love myself in a tangible way. And it starts with the hydration and the water. It starts with nutritional eating. I haven't even finished my breakfast, but I've got some avocado toast some eggs with some scrambled vegetables um, that have been roasted with it and being okay with loving myself when I'm alone, when I'm moving, but also when I'm still. And as someone with ADHD, it is not easy to practice stillness because even when my body is still, 
as a woman, my mind is always racing. But here's what I know for sure. We can cultivate any of these practices. We can develop them as small habits, as James Clear talks about in Atomic Habits, that what can you commit to five minutes a day? One thing. And his example was, if you drive to the gym, you get out, you spend five minutes there. Even if you don't do anything, you get in the car and you drive home. You're starting to build that habit. For some of us, it might only take a few days. For some, it might take three weeks. For some people, it might take months. It depends on how much of a change that new habit is in our routine. So I hope you feel encouraged that you can feel the love that you can and should be encouraged, and that you can move forward. If you feel stuck, I get it. You know, I do open the membership every month. I'm trying to keep it simple. Once a month, the second Monday of the month, and there's two time slots. Some members will be military affiliated. You might be active duty, former active duty. You might be a military spouse or a former spouse. You might be someone who is married, separated, or divorced. You might be someone who is starting your own business, or you're working, or you want to pivot careers. There is support in here for when women get together and have meaningful conversations. That makes all the difference. And it's normal to feel uncomfortable, but I assure you that as facilitator, my job is to help you feel more comfortable. And if you have the courage just to show up, I can guarantee you will feel better about yourself and your life after just one session. So I hope you'll join us. I'll put details in the notes. Thanks so much. This is Hillary Baggett with Hill Talks Momentum in Midlife Podcast. I hope you know that you're not alone. Let's move forward together. Do you know someone who is over the age of 40 that might enjoy listening to some of these stories or interviews? Please help me by sharing this episode. Ask your friends to subscribe and tell them a little bit about it. You know, the goal is so that people will know that you're not alone. Okay, be honest. Was this an upper or a little bit of a downer? Is it Good to know that you're not alone if you struggle with self-love, self-compassion, self-care. Are you connected in a community? Would you like to join a community of women who are over 40, 50, and 60, and they want to support you? The second Monday of every month, we have meetings, 1230 Eastern Time, and then again, 730 p.m. Eastern Time. Reach out, connect. You're worth it. Thanks so much for listening. If you've made it this far, I appreciate you being an essential part of the Women's Midlife Network. We're connecting women. We're sharing stories and inspiring change. And not just for now, but for decades to come. I am so thankful for you. And I always hope you feel the love. Until next.